modern trombone isn't very different from its medieval predecessor, known as the sackbut, with its distinctive S-shape, hand slide and bell section. It's a blast from the past, and a pretty loud one, but it can also sound smooth and mellow. We're not blowing our own trumpet when we say that this one is going to be great. The trombone literally slides down to the low notes. It's the only instrument which uses a hand slide to change pitch. To make a trombone, sheet brass is cut in the pattern of a bell stem. It's shaped by wrapping it around a steel rod. The brass is hammered with a nylon-headed mallet to shape it further. It takes just a few minutes for a rough bell stem to form. The stem is spread open slightly so small notches can be made on one edge. Then, the notches are tapped down with a brass-headed hammer so they hold the edges together. With an acetylene torch, the notched seam is joined. Brass alloy wire is melted in to bond it securely. But the seam overlaps and is too thick, so it's run through a seam roller. Two tons of pressure thins it, but now the bell stem is too flat. To round it out, it's shoved onto a bell-shaped rod and hammered back into shape. The hammer marks are ironed out with rollers. The bell stem fitted loosely on a steel mandrel goes through a draw bench. A hydraulic cylinder pushes it through a thick lead washer, pressing it tightly around the mandrel to shape it. To make the bell flare to attach to the stem, a brass disc is placed on a spinning lathe. The edges of the disc are turned using pliers to prevent it from flapping while spinning. Next, this spinning tool is manipulated using a lever. It's pressed against the turning brass disc. This shapes the disc into a flare. Making a trombone flare is a delicate business and is the work of a skilled craftsman. Getting it right is critical because the shape will affect the tone of the trombone. Next, with a torch, he brazes the flare to the bell stem. The bell stem and flare now turn on a mandrel. Whilst a wooden tool is used to press against the seam, this flattens the seam and gives the bell its final shape. Now it's time to make the tubing. A hydraulic cylinder pulls it on a mandrel through a die, stretching it considerably. In this way, both the diameter and thickness of the tubing are precisely controlled. Then, the tubes are filled with water and put in the freezer. The ice will keep the thin tubing from buckling in the next process. The tube is bent around a U-shaped block. As it's worked into a U-shape, the tubing hardens. After the ice melts, the U-bend is placed in a boiling out die. The tubing is lubricated with oil and a steel ball is placed at the top of the tube and pressed down. Smaller balls are inserted, which push the first larger ball through the tube. This stretches the inside of the tube, rounding it to the correct diameter. The balls exit at the other end. Now the tubes are pieced together and soldered. A loop is added for the valve section. In total, a base trombone contains two and three quarter meters of tubing. Finally, a brace is soldered in place to add strength to one of the loops. A diamond tip tool engraves the company logo onto the trombone's bell stem and a cloth buffing wheel spins against the trombone's flare to polish it. This custom trombone has been built in approximately 50 hours. Something worth blowing a horn about. <laughs>